For this problem, we will have to determine the values of x, y, and z when the entropy is maximum for A. Um, and we know that when the entropy is maximum, all the probabilities have to be equal. So in our case, they will be equal to 1 over 3 because we have three values. And we also know that the sum of all probabilities has to be equal to 1. So we will have to solve a, a system of equations uh, in which the first probability x plus y equals 1 over 3, the second one 1 over 3, and the third probability 1 over 3 as well. We will try to express z in terms of x, so z equals 1 over 3 minus x. If we substitute z in the second equation, we will get that y equals x. And if we substitute y in the first equation, we will get that 2x equals 1 over 3. So our final values are going to be equal. x equals y equals z. And they are going to be equal with 1 over 6. To calculate the entropy, we will use this formula right here. And the entropy will be equal to negative 3, because we have 3 probabilities with the same value, times 1 over 3, log in base 2 from 1 over 3, which equals 1.585 bits. So this is the answer for the maximum entropy. For B, uh, we have to calculate the entropy when it's minimum. And the entropy is minimum when one of the probabilities is 1 and the rest of them are 0. So that's why we are going to have three different cases. The first case, we take the first probability as being equal to 1. So we express Z as negative x, y will equal then x, and 2x will be equal to 1. So our values for the first case are going to be x equals 1 over 2 y equals 1 over 2, and z equals negative 1 over 2. For a second case, we are going to take the second probability as being 1, and we will write z as negative x, y then will be equal to 1 plus x, And 2x plus 1 will be equal to 0. So our values are going to be x will equal negative 1 over 2, y will be 1 over 2, and z will be 1 over 2. For our third case, we will take the third probability as being 1. So z will be 1 minus x. That means that y is going to be x minus 1. And if we substitute y in the first equation, we will get 2x equals 1. So our, fa our final values are going to be x equals 1 over 2, y is negative 1 over 2, and z will be 1 over 2. To calculate the entropy, we will use the same formula, and we will have negative 1 times log in base 2 from 1, 
minus 0 times log in base 2 from 0, which will be 0. And then again, minus 0 times log in base 2 from 0, which will be 0 as well. So our final answer is going to be 0 bits, which means that in all cases the entropy will be 0. For the second uh, problem with uh, Shannon, we will have to calculate the entropy when extracting one ball from the box. In order to do this, we will have to find the total numbers, the total number of uh, balls. So we will add them all and we will get a number of 28 balls. So the probability of extracting a red ball is going to be 4 over 28. which means 1 over 7. The probability of extracting a white ball is going to be 12 over 28, which means, if we simplify it, um, 3 over 7. The probability of extracting a yellow ball will be 4 over 28, which means 1 um, over 7. And the probability of extracting a green ball is going to be 8 over 28, which means 2 over 7. We will use the same um, formula for the entropy as we used in the previous problems, and now we are just going to substitute all the values. So we will have negative and then 2 over 7, because we have two probabil probabilities that uh, have the same value times log in base two from two over from one over seven plus the next probability is three over seven log in base two from three over seven. Plus, our last probability is 1 over 7. Log in base 2 from 1 over 7. And the final answer will be 1.727 bits. The next two exercises are with fixed point representation. So for the first one, we have to calculate n1 plus n2. And in order to do this, we have to represent these two numbers in direct code and write their binary representation. So I did the binary representation down below for 40 and 20. And we will represent 40 uh, through 0 in front because it's a positive number and because negative 20 has a negative sign we will represent it through 1 and the rest of the bits are part of the binary representation as I did it uh, here uh, then we will do the addition so we'll have 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 then in order to represent it in inverse code for 40 we will keep the same binary representation because it has a positive sign so it remains unchanged and for the second number for negative 20 we will have to do a change because it has a negative sign so this means that all the zeros are going to be replaced by ones and all the ones are going to be replaced by zeros. And now we will do the addition again. So we have one, one, zero, zero, one, 
0, 0, 0. And we keep one in mind that we will add at the end in order to obtain the normalized result. So we have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. which is 20. Then to represent these two numbers in complementary code for 40, it, it will be the same because uh, it's a positive number. And then for negative uh, 20, because it's a negative uh, number, we will look at the representation in direct code and we will start writing the number from the end, so we have 0, 0, until we reach the first one. And after that, all of these bits are going to change. All the zeros are going to be replaced by ones and all the ones are going to be replaced by zeros. So we are going to have um, one. 0, 1, 1, and we will add them, and we will obtain 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Um, and this will also be the normalized result because it's a positive number, it has a positive sign, so this means that the result remains unchanged. For the second exercise, we will solve it in a similar way. We have negative uh, 91 plus 14. Here, I represent 91 uh, in binary, and it's, uh, it has one in front, because it has a negative sign. And here I represented uh, 14 in a binary representation as well with a zero in front because it's a positive number. So we will do the addition and we have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then we are going to do the inverse code representation and for the first number, because it's a negative number, we will replace all the zeros with ones and on all the ones with zeros. So we will have one zero one zero zero one zero zero and then for the second number we will keep the same number because it's positive, so nothing changes. F0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, 1, 0. So we will do the addition and we get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And we will normalize the result because we have a negative sign. So we keep the sign and we replace all the zeros with ones and all the ones with zeros. So we will have one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, which will be negative 77. And to represent this in a complementary code for the first number, because it's a negative number, we will look at the direct code representation and we will see where we reach the first one and after that we will replace all the ones with zeros and all the zeros with ones. So we will start writing the number from the end we reached the first one, and now we 
will change the beat. So we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the second number remains the same because it has a positive uh, sign. So I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And we do the addition and we get 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And we will normalize this result because it has a negative sign. So we will write the number from the end. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Which is negative 77. The following two exercises, we will solve floating point simple precision uh, representation. And the first decimal number is 74.125. So what we'll have to do is representing 74 and 0 0.125 in binary. And that's what I did here. So 74 will be 100010 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 in binary because we have ones on the first, third, and sixth position. And for 0 0.125, we will have to multiply it by 2 and till we get to 0. And in this way, the representation in binary will be 0, 0, 1. So 74.125 in binary will be 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 10.001. Now we will have to move the point till we get to this very first one. So we will move the point with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 positions. So we will have 1.00101. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 times 2 to the power of 6. Now we calculate uh, car, which is uh, exponent plus 127, and the exponent is 6 plus 127, which will give us 133. And 133 in binary will be 2 to the power of 7, so 128. We will get 5 here. We have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. We will get 1. 2 to the power of 0, we will get 1, 0. So 1. 33 in binary will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, because we will have um, ones on the 0 position, 2nd position, and 7th position. Now, we will write the sign here, which is 0, because our number is positive. And we will write the car, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And the mantissa, which is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 which is everything after the point here. For the second uh, exercise, we will do, we will solve it in a similar way. So here we have 
to represent in binary 18 and 0 uh, 60, uh, 625. And 18 in binary is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, because we have 1s on the first position and on the fourth position. And then 0 0.625, we multiplied it by 2 till we got 0 here. So the representation in binary will be 1, 0, 1. Now the entire decimal number will be negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 point. One zero one. We will have to move the point one, two, three, four positions to move it after the first one. So one point zero zero one zero one zero one times two to the power of four. Now the car will be exponent plus 127. The exponent is 4 plus 127. We will get 131. Which in binary will be... We have 2 to the power of 7. 128. We get 3, we have 2 here, 1, and 2 to the power of 0, 1, in the end. So, the binary representation will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, because we have 1 on the 0 position, 1st position, and 7th position. So now we will write the sign, which is 1, because we have a negative number. The car will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 which is the binary representation of 131. And the mantissa is everything after the point here. So it will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So for the first exercise, we have this operation 1996 plus 3747, and we have to transform it in BCD code and say how many times we use the correction factor. Here we computed uh, the sum between 1996 plus 3747, which is 5743. And now we have to transform these numbers in BCD code. For one, uh, 1996, we have, for 1, we have 0, 0, 1. For 9, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. For 9, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 again. And here we have 6. And for 37, 47, here we have 3, 7, 4, and 7 again. And now, okay, so we'll start uh, from right to left, and we have zero mode one, one, one mode one, zero, and one in mind. One of the mind, mode one, mode one, one, and one in mind again. One of the mind, mode zero, mode zero, one. And because this number is bigger than 9, we have to use the correction factor, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. And we have again 1 mode 0, 1. 0 mode 1, 1. 
1 mode 1 0 and 1 in mind 1 of the mind mode 1 mode 0 0 and 1 in mind and this one we'll put it here one of the mind from here mode 1 mode 0 it's 0 and 1 in mind one of the mind mode 0 mode 0 1 then we have 0 mode 1 1 and 1 mode 0 1 and this number is again bigger than 9 and we have to use the correction factor and we have 0 mode 0 0 1 mode 1 0 and 1 in mind 1 of the mind mode 1 mode 1 1 and 1 in mind 1 of the mind mode 1 mode 0 0 and 1 in mind again 1 of the mind mode 1 mode 1 1 and 1 in mind 1 mode 0 mode 1 of 0 and the one in mind. One of the zero one zero and one in mind. And one of the one zero zero and one in again zero and nine. So one of zero one zero one one zero one one zero 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 and one of one from here. And this is the result. Here we have a uh, five. Here we have a uh, seven. A uh, four and three, which is correct. Okay. For the second exercise, we have to represent in uh, 84, 21, excess 3 and gray, the number 1863. In 84, 21, we have to write the number here. And 1863 divided by 2 is uh, 931. And the rest is 1. Uh, 931 divided by 2, it's 400, uh, 465, rest uh, 1. 465 divided by 2, it's 232, rest 1. 252 divided by 2, it's 116, rest 0. And 116 divided by 2, it's 58, rest um, 0. 58 divided by 2, it's 29, rest 0. Uh, 29 divided by uh, 2, it's 14, rest uh, 1. 14 divided by 2, it's 7, rest 0. 7 divided by 2, it's 3, rest 1. And 3 divided by 2, it's 1, rest 1. And uh, we read this number from bottom to... Uh, top and this is the first number one and then we have like this one one zero one zero 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 one 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 this is one okay uh, for gray, we have to add the mode between uh, the numbers, and we have the first number is 1, then 1 mode 1, 0, 1 mode 1, 0, 1 mode 0, 1, 0 mode 1, 1, 1 mode 0, 1. 1 0 mode 0 0 0 mode 0 0 0 mode 1 1 1 mode 1 0 1 mode 1 0, one mode one, zero. and this is the number transforming in gray and then the last one we have excess 3 and we have to add the zero, zero, one, 1 in binary but uh, first of all we have to transform 1863 in bcd code this is 1 then we have 8 here we have 6 and 3 and we add 0011 and again 0011 and we have 1 mode 1 0 and this is the excess tree here one eight and 3. 
so for this exercise we have the message which is one zero one zero one zero 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 and which is transmitted after cyclic polynomial coding through the generator and uh, which is the binary representation of the send message so here we have the message and we have we have like this zero one two three four five six seven and we have uh, x to the power of seven from here plus x to the power of five from here plus x to the power of three from here okay then we have to compute the um, m prime of x, which is uh, m x multiplied by the highest power of the generator, which is x to the power of 2. And we'll have like this, x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 5 plus x uh, to the power of 3 multiplied by x to the power of 2 this is m x and this is the highest power of the generator okay so we'll have x to the power of 7 multiplied by x to the power of 2 it's x to the power of 9 plus um, x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 5 and then we have um, x to the power of 9 plus x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 5 and here we have the generator x to the power of 2 plus x plus one and we will have x to the power of seven because x to the power of seven plus uh, multiplied by x to the power of two it's x to the power of nine so here we'll have x to the power of nine then x to the power of seven multiplied by x is um x to the power of eight and x to the power of seven multiplied by one it's x to the power of 7 and we will cut x to the power of 9 and x to the power of 7 and we will remain with x to the power of 8 and x to the power of 5 then we have x to the power of 6 x to the power of 6 multiplied by x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 8 then x to the power of 6 multiplied by x is x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 6 multiplied by 1 is x to the power of 6 and we cut x to the power of 8 and we have x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 6 and here we have x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 5 multiplied by x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 7 then we have x to the power of 6 this plus and plus, uh, plus uh, x to the power of and we have x power 7, x power 5, and x to the power 6. And the rest is 0. And the message is uh, m prime of x plus uh, the rest. And m prime of x is x to the power of 9 plus x to the power of 7 plus x to the power of 5 and the rest is 0 so that's it and the message is um, we have to write uh, this again uh, but to add 1 on the position 9 and it will be like this one zero uh, one zero one zero 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 one two three four five six seven eight nine nine from here seven five and that's it 
So for the second exercise, we have the message, um, um, which is uh, uh, and was coded by the generating polynomial, and we have to verify this message. So this is the message, and this is the generator, and we we'll have like this message x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2 plus 1 and the generator x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus 1 so x to the power of 3 and x to the power of 3 uh, multiplied by x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 6 x to the power of 3 multiplied by x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 5 and then we'll have x to the power of 3 and we'll cut x to the power of, uh, power of 6 and we'll remain with x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus 1 this is one, and we have here plus x power of two, x power of two plus divided by x power of three is x power of five plus x power of four plus x power of two, and we got x power of five, x power of four, x power of two, and remain with x power of three plus one, and again here uh, we have plus one and x power of three plus x power of four, so two sorry plus one and we got one and x power of three and remain with x power of two, which is the rest. And we write x power of 2 like this, 0, um, zero 1, zero, 0, which is different by 0. So we have to resend res the message. So this is the Hamming code. And... Um, uh these are the parity bits h1 h2 h4 h8 because uh, these are the powers of two and um uh, here we have h1 h2 h3 which is not correct h4 h5 h6 h7 and then we have h8 and 9 10 11 and 12. so for h1 we will have like this we'll take the first one which is zero and jump the next one then we'll take zero and jump the next one we'll take one and jump the next one we'll take one and jump the next one take one and zero and that's it so we will have zero mode zero mode one mode one mode one mode zero and this is one for h two we start from h two and we'll take the first two numbers and then we'll jump the next two numbers and take these two again and jump the next two numbers h2 is zero mode zero mode zero mode one mode one and mode zero and this is zero for h4 we'll have like this we will start from h4 and we'll take the first four numbers and jump the next four numbers take this zero so one mode one mode zero mode one mode zero and this is one and for h8 we we'll start from h8 and we'll take the first eight numbers and we have zero mode one mode one mode so zero mode zero and this is zero so the the number is one zero one zero in binary and we'll have 2 to the power of 3 
plus two to the power of one, which is 10 and bit 10 is the wrong one. And we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the wrong bit. Wrong. And the original message is zero 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 one one zero one zero one then we correct the wrong bit which is zero now and we have zero zero and without parity bits we'll have zero one zero one one zero 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 without h1 h2 h4 and h8 and um we have to convert to hex so Uh, this is five and here we have an eight so in hex we will have 58 okay so the second exercise we have um, numbers CB and CA um, C it's 12 and B it's 11 and in binary is 110012 B is 1011 and again here we have C in binary and A in binary and um, we will look here 10 um, and these numbers are different so a next a uh, one one it's okay they are the same zero zero okay one one okay uh, zero zero um okay zero zero okay one one okay one one uh okay So the hemming distance is one. So we have to check if P plus Q negated is logically equivalent P negated plus Q negated. And I'm going to present you two methods. The first one is going to be using the Morgan. So we have P plus Q negated. And we have to negate all of this, which is P negated, and the plus sign negated is the multiplication Q negated. And from this, we can conclude that P plus Q negated, it's not logically equivalent to P plus Q negated. Now, our second method is going to be using truth tables. So we have two variables, p and q, so we are going to have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4 values. So q, we are going to have in the first half 0, 0, because we have 4 values, and in the second half 1, 1. Now, in the first half of this half, we are going to have 0, and then we are going to have 1, Again, 0 and 1. Okay, now we are going to see what happens here. This is the negation sign, but it's not a bar sign, it's another sign. But it's still negation. And what happens here? 
Okay, let's see. P is 0, 0, 1, 1. Q is 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, anything plus 1, it's going to be 1. So 0 plus 0, it's 0. 0 plus 1, it's going to be 1. 1 plus 0, 1 and 1. Now, we have to negate this. So, 0 negated is 1. 1 negated is 0, 0, 0. We are going to do the same thing for this side. So, P negated is, we look here, it's 1, 1, 0, 0. Q negated is 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, as I said, if you have 1 plus 1, it's 1, 1 plus 0, it's 1, 1, one and 0 here. And from the third table, you can see that these two are not equal, which means that P plus Q negated is not logically equivalent P negated plus Q negated. Let me see what happens when we have P negated multiplied with Q negated. So P negated is 1, 1, 0, 0, and we have here 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, we have this sign, multiplication. So, this is true only if both values are true. So, true and true is going to be true, which is 1. 1 and 0 is going to be 0. 0 and 1 is 0, and 0 and 0 is 0. And you can see that this is the same with this one, which means that P plus Q negated is logically equivalent to P negated multiplied with Q negated. Now, I'm going to draw a circuit, a logical circuit, for this one. So, P negated is going to be like this. When we want to draw negation, we are going to do this triangle in this circle, and then it is negated. Q is going to be the same. Triangle, circle, and we have here Q negated. Now, we want multiplication. So, you have to know that when you have OR, which is plus in logic, it's going to be this drawing. We have, when we have n, which is multiplication, we are going to have this sign. So we have multiplication right here, so we are going to draw the second sign. And this is p multiplied with q. So we have this exercise and we have to simplify the function and to draw its circuit. So, x double negation is going to be x multiplied with y multiplied with z double negation. All negated is going to be y negated. The multiplication sign is going to become plus. And z is going to be z negated. This is in a parenthesis. Multiplied with x negated, all negated is going to be x. The plus sign is going to become multiplication and y negated, all negated is going to be y. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, Let me put it right. Okay, x, x, y. x multiplied with x is going to be x. So our final result is this. Okay, so let me draw the circuit. 
we have these three variables and we are going to use x, y negated, and z. Uh, okay, so this is y negated. This is z negated, and this is their sum. Now we have to multiply it with x. So this is x, and with y. I'm going to take y from here, jump, and yeah, and right here, and this is multiplication, and the final result is x multiplied with So, we have a function f and its outputs. Now I'm going to put the values for abc. And we have three variables, so this means 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 8. So, the first four values for a are going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, then the other half is 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, the first half of this for b is going to be 0, 0, and then 1, 1. Again, 0, 0. And for c, okay, now we have 1 here, 1 here, and I forgot to put Okay, and one here, zero, 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 and zero. Now, DCS is used for main terms and CCF is used for max terms. We are going to work in this exercise only with main terms. So, so, as I wrote here, when we have 1, it means that it is true. And we have m0 here, m1, m2, m3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, a main term is a product. So, we have here 1 and 1 and 0. 0 is false, which means A is false and B and C are true. At 6, we have this is 0, which is false, 1, 1. We have A, B, C negated. And here we have A, B, C. Now I'm going to write this. So, a function it's, is equal with the um, sum of the min terms, and the min term is product. So, f is going to be m3 plus m6 plus m7, and it is, it is also equal to the product of its max terms and max terms are this with zero which m0 multiplied to m1 m2 m4 and m5 
Okay. Now I'm going to draw the cardinal table with the mean terms. We have three variables. Right? So, A here and B, C here. Now, we have 0 and 1. And here we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. This is reversed because we should have the hemming distance 1 between all of these. And this is why I put it right here. And yeah, and this is because the gray code. Now, this is 0, 1, this is 3, and 2, because it is reversed. 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 6. We have the mean terms M3, M7, and M6. Now we should group them like that. This is the first group, this is the second group. Why? Because we should have on horizontal or vertical, not diagonally, uh, the maximum number of mean terms that we can put in a group. So the maximum is two right here because we have only two and here is also two. So one is going to be BC. Why? Because if you look on this column, B and C are always constant. You see? Because at 3, we have BC, at 7, BC. But A, it's not constant. We look also on the line, on the line and on the column. So only B and C are constant. Now, for the second one, A is constant because at 7 and at 6, we have A. And it is true because it is 1 also for B and C. They are not negated because we have 1. And now we are going to look on the column. So what is constant here is this 1 because this part is changing when we are looking at 7 and then at 6. This is not constant, only this 1 which is B. So, we can conclude that our function simplified is AB plus, because we are working with mean terms, plus BC. Now, I'm going to show you, to demonstrate to you this. So, up here, we have F equals M3 plus M6 plus M7. Now, M3 is A negated BC plus ABC negated plus ABC. This is equal to, we are going to group this two. So, we are going to have BC times A negated plus A. This is always one plus ABC. We are going to have BC plus ABC negated. So, B is the common factor times C plus AC negated. This is C plus A, which means that our final result is going to be BC plus AB, which is equal to this. So, we are going to use max terms to draw the K map and to simplify the function.
and after that we are going to draw its circuit. So we have 2 to the power of 4 because we have 4 variables a, b, c and d which is 16 and we have the values, the first 8 values for a are going to be zeros. The next 8 are going to be 1s. Now, we have 8 values here, so the half of 8 is 4. The 4 values 4b are going to be 0, then 1, and so on. And this is 4, the first half. So, so for C, we are going to have 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. Okay, this is here, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now for D is 0, 1. Okay, so CCF is used for max terms, and max terms are true when are zero, and when we have one, it's false. So we have zero here, 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 all blue colors. Now M0 is going to be A plus D plus C plus D because max terms are sums and this is because we have zero right here and they are all true. Now M1 is going to be A plus B plus C plus D negated. This is why because we have this one and it's false if we have max terms. Now M2 is going to be A plus B plus C negative plus D because we have this one. Now M4 is going to be A plus B negative plus C plus D because we have this. Now M6 is going to be A plus B plus C. These two are negative right here plus D. M8 is going to be A negative plus B plus C plus D and M9 is going to be A negative plus B plus C plus D negative. Now our function is going to be the product of its max terms which are M0 times M1 times M4, M6, M8, and M9, and the sum of its min terms. Min terms are this. We have a min term when we have a 1, because it's true, and 0 is false for the min terms. So we are going to have M3, sorry. M2, no, it's M3, and here we have also M2, I forgot about that, M3 plus M5 plus M7 plus M10, This is it. This is the function. Now we are going to draw the k map with the max terms.
and we have four variables so we're going to have four columns and four rows a b c d zero 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 one 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 zero this is inverse because of the gray code and we have to have between these the hemming distance one so this is why we have like that this is good because you zero zero one now this is zero one this is inverse so we have three two four five seven six now this is inverse so we have eight here nine 11, 10, 12, 13, 15, 14. Our max terms are M0, M1, M2, M4, M8, M9, and M6. Now, we are going to group these guys uh, so we have to have in each group the maximum number of max terms that we can take so this is the first group and we can take like that this is one now our second group is going to be this one because this is the maximum number that we can take we can take vertically and horizontally but not on diagonal okay and yeah that's it this is two so one is going to be we are looking at the columns so we have zero 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 one right what remains constant is this c and it's true because it's zero plus so we are looking at the rows so plus b because it is a constant so we have c plus b and the second so we are looking here and here on the rows what what is constant this is a plus and we are looking on the columns and the constant one is going to be d so f is going to be a plus d times b plus c and this is our final result now let me throw um, circuit for this one so we have a b c and d are four variables This is it. So we have a plus d times b plus c. And this is our circle.